I made my bras, and then I was wearing that. It's quite yeah. cool. Is it? Are you uh, mm. are you you going to to post a picture on Facebook? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, I'll I'll um, have a look because I'd I'd love to see to see your handiwork. Hmm. Yeah. Ah, I have two Facebook. I posted it to another Facebook. Okay, so <laughs> you've already posted it to Facebook. Fantastic. Yeah. I'll uh, <laughs> I'll go and have a look. <laughs> Great stuff. <laughs> All right, and and Mark, welcome again. It's good to see you again. Uh, thank you. It's good to see you too. Yeah, well, great. Have Have you and Kaidi met before? Yeah, we have. <laughs> All right. Hi, Heidi. Hello. Have you You've met Mark before, Kaidi? Yes, often. All right. Yeah, I remember uh, that one time that you told me. Well, I also asked Kaidi about uh, if, if she'd met someone, and she said, "Yes, I see more often than I see my family." <laughs> so uh, that's uh, <laughs> the wonderful thing about Golingo. <laughs> it's always it's 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 starting to feel like family now. Um, Kaidi knows. I think Kaidi was in in the first class that I ever. Presented when I started yeah. with Kalinga, um, yeah, right. so so Mark, you will uh, uh, maybe it's it's good to tell you as well. I've only been with Kalinga now for about three weeks, and um, yeah, it was or three or four. I'm not sure, but anyway, um, Kadi was one of my first students, and it's uh, oh. uh, it's I'm I'm enjoying it immensely. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. All right, so um, so. Kaidi, uh, you say you you had a good weekend, and and how was how was your Monday? Mm, Kaidi, can you hear me? Kaidi, can you hear me? Oh, I'm sorry. I went to <laughs> Italian restaurant yesterday for. Oh yeah. For and uh, mm. I ate a uh, pumpkin risotto. Ooh, that sounds delicious. Yeah, I like risotto. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm ac yeah. actually oh, hungry now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. my friend. Then he gave me um, eggplant. Oh, yeah? Mm. The, oh. Uh, yesterday I cooked the eggplant for our dinner. All right. Egg, eggplant, uh, am I think it's the same as, as brinjal. Brinjal? I don't know. The purple one? Yeah. It's uh, like what I'm going to do is... Sheep yeah. is <laughs> like lamp bulb. Yeah, like, like, a, like a, a bulb. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I want to quickly one. quickly see if I see a, a, a picture. In, in South Africa, um, for some reason, people, yeah, mm. people call it brinjal. Mm. But in in Afrikaans, the the word we use is um, yeah, translates to eggplant. Mm. Do you like eggplant? Oh, I love it. It's <laughs> it's delicious. Yeah, and I've yeah. I've got a I've got a picture up here. There we go. Ah uh, yes yes. All right. Oh, I, I don't know this this green one. I know I've, I've, the purple. Yeah, I I haven't seen the green one either. We we get these. In, in South Africa, we we mm -hmm. see them quite a bit, the purple ones. We have both in Brazil too. Is it? Yeah. What is what does the green one taste like? I think it's uh, kind of. Uh, you know what? Actually, I think I tried those ones, but I don't. You know, I don't think there is so much difference between the two of the, both of them. I think it's the same. I like it, but, you know, not, but I'm the only one at home that like it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I must say, I'd, the 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 uh, brinjal or the the eggplant reminds me of of a, a mushroom almost, the taste. But it's it's a, a little bit. Um, well, I think it's better than mushroom, but it's uh, it reminds me of it. And uh, but I love it. Yeah, me too. 
Yeah. <coughs> and I, I am going to uh, be presumptuous and say I assume the fact that both of you are in this class means that uh, you both enjoy good food. Oh, definitely. <laughs> ah, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> well, it means I, I'm definitely in good company. Because <laughs> ah, no, I uh, I absolutely love good food, um, and like you, I'm pretty sure you guys saw that we'll be talking about South African cuisine today. I've I've been to Tunisia, so I I ate some uh, African food, but it's only northern part, so I I don't know about the South African cuisine. Yeah, I think uh, I think you'll be uh, at least. Uh, Tickled, um, very very interested when you when you see what we uh, can consider the what can I can I say delicacies in South Africa. Um, we've got some well, we've got some really superb foods. Um, so, but before before we continue on that, before we talk too much about food, so I was just opening our page there, so I get that. Uh, Ready for us? Okay, you guys can see that. Wonderful. Um, okay, so we'll be looking at some South African recipes and ingredients. Have you guys seen what what we've got on the picture there? Have you ever seen that before? Uh, no. Is it the rice? No. No, it's. Let me quickly ask Mark. Mark, have you, have you seen that before? No, I haven't. All right. We call it babuti. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm trying to think. How would we spell it if we, if I had to spell it the way we pronounce it? That's kind of difficult. But it's called babuti, and it's a mixture of um, spicy meat. Um, mm -hmm. Usually, usually uh, there's quite a bit of curry in there, um, mm -hmm. and and egg. Mm -hmm. So they make, but it's it's hard to. Explain, you know, if you can go look up a recipe for babuti, mm. it is absolutely oh. delicious. And and yeah. then, yeah. then we, must be. Really. Oh. <laughs> and then we, we, and it's said that it's spice. Yeah, it's 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 very spicy and it's oh, but it's yeah. delicious. And no, then, I love that. I love spicy food. <laughs> <Really>. Great. <laughs> and then we always eat it with Mrs. H. S. Ball's chutney. That's uh, I'm I'm sure you, you guys know chutney, but in South Africa we've got Mrs. Ball's chutney, and that just tastes better than any chutney I've ever tasted. So um, that was just to to get you guys' mouth mouths watering. Yeah. Let's. Right uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just to just to get you in the mood for food. All right, so uh, let's. With, without further ado, let's have a look at our uh, at, at our lesson for the day. All right, so uh, what we're talking about is um, quickly opening it. Um, we talk. Af sorry, go South, Af South yeah. Africa was colonized by uh, England, so uh, is it effect affected from England cuisine? Um, I think yes, the English uh, cuisine affected it, but luckily not too much. <laughs> um, the, I think you know we. Uh, I've told Kaidi before. My wife and I visited England in in uh, June, and I find the food quite bland in England. So um, we've. I think we've taken our ins food inspiration literally from all over the world. We've. Um, We've we've got recipes and and influences that come from India, um, China, uh, Japan, even um, I'm trying to think Brazil, Ireland, all over, literally. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's we we have a very rich uh, food culture. Oh, do you have tea time like England? <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and and we we don't eat cucumber sandwiches either. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I see Wafa has just joined us. Hi, Wafa. Wafa, can you can you hear us? Wafa, I think it 
you might be experiencing some yeah. problems with your audio. Ah, there we go. Hi there. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Good. And How welcome to class. I'm doing well, thanks. Yeah, very well. Uh, so, uh, but welcome to the class. And uh, okay, Ken, welcome again. Uh, well, I haven't I haven't seen you since Sunday, but it's good to see you again. Ken, can you can you hear us? Hello. Okay. Are you there? Okay, Ken, can uh, can you hear us? Ah, okay. We uh, we seem to be experiencing some problems hearing you, but uh, welcome to the class. It's good to see you again. Um, I've I've just turned off my video to see. Um, it doesn't seem to be a connection. Off, uh, uh, just in case. All right. So, uh, okay, Ken's going to try again. Anyway, so uh, okay, let's quickly see if he's going to rejoin us. Um, all right. While we wait, let's uh, let's let's start talking about our our grammar for the day. Um, we t we're talking about. Um, sorry, guys. I'm just trying to get back to my page. Ay ay ay! I lost it there. All right. So we're talking about um, future questions. All right. So, can anybody give me an example or tell me something about future questions? Um, well, I think there are there are at least three ways of saying the future in English. Yeah. Um, you can use the auxiliary verb will. Yeah. Uh, we can use going to. Yeah. And, uh, and I think you can use even present continuous for future for arrangements or something. Can Can you give me an example of where you would use present continuous for the future? Yeah, um, I'm having dinner with you tomorrow. Well, very good. Yeah. All right. So um, you can you can use that as well for uh, for future. All right, but what we will be looking at today is future questions. So uh, the first one is exactly what you said. Um, we can use will for a future question and the construction of the sentence will be uh, will plus the subject plus the verb pl plus an optional time phrase. Okay, so you, you don't have to have the time phrase, it is optional. For example, will you go to work tomorrow? Right, or will you send an email? All right, so that's using using will for a future question. Uh, can I see you back? Yes, can you hear me? Now I can hear you perfectly. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's good to have you in class again. Oh, thank you very much. Great, <laughs> good to great. see you here. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, all right, so guys, we're, um, just Ken, just briefly, we've just started. We're talking about future questions, and uh, we we we've started speaking about what uh, you know how to construct a future questions, what we can use for future questions, and the first one is will. Um, now, an, an interesting thing I just also want to say that that Mark mentioned was when we talk about the future, not necessarily in a question, but when we talk about the future, we can use the present continuous. And Mark used the example, um, I will, uh, what I am having dinner with you tomorrow. All right, so uh, that was well spotted. I didn't think about that one. All right, great stuff. So getting back to our, to our future questions. So the, se the first one we use will for a future question. For example, will you send an email? Then secondly, we can use going to. All right, there we go. Going to for future question. Um, for example, are they going to the party this weekend? Um, 
or mom, am I going to get a kitten? Um, all right, so then the third one. Uh, you can form a future question with a present continuous. Aha! So you can do it for questions as well. Not just when you talk about the future, also when you when you do questions. Um, can anybody give me an example where you would use the present continuous to ask a question about the future? Anybody? Um, uh, okay, please. <laughs> right, kid. <laughs> okay. Okay, Ken, uh, you can uh, take this one for us. Oh, okay. Uh, are you are you having dinner tonight? All right, there we go. So, just basically using the same sentence, we're just turning it into a question. Are you having dinner tonight? Yeah. Very good. All right, so it, it sounds like you guys have got a very firm grasp on that. Are there any questions about it? Nothing. All right. Um, that's okay for me. Great stuff. All right, Fa, are you uh, are you very quiet? Are you um, are you happy with that? Any questions? No, please. All right, Thanks. fantastic. Great stuff. Okay, so um, the the next thing that I'd like to just bring to your attention to all of you is um, the the pronunciation. Um, we, for, for for example, if if I'm going to say, "Is he going to work tomorrow?" It's it's it feels clumsy when I say, "Is he." So, I'm not yeah. gonna. I'm not gonna say is he. I'm gonna say is he. All right. So we we glide that um, into that 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 second word. Um, in other words, is he da 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 becomes is he. All right. So that just makes it easier. It makes it makes conversation flow better. All right, and I'm pretty sure that's what we all want. We want our conversation to flow. We don't want to fall over our own words. <laughs> all right, so um, they they uh, what what the the clever people say. They say many of the smallest words in English are reduced to just a vowel or a consonant. Yeah. So, so it's uh, you know that's one of the fun things about English is. Um, but but I think if any of you have ever visited the UK, you will see that I think the the English take it a step too far. <laughs> if, especially, you know, if you if you go to to certain areas, they cut their words so short that you you can't follow them. You can't understand what they're saying. <laughs> so uh, the, wow. yeah, that's um, I'm tr I'm trying to think of an example of. Um, any of you guys have ever seen the movie uh, Snatch? Oh yeah, I do. I have. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Now, in the in that movie, you see, especially Brad Pitt's character, yeah. when he speaks, he cuts the words very short, and you you can't follow what he's saying. You know, and he talks fast, and he, he cuts the words short. All right. So the important thing is. We we must cut out um, um, the, the the little words like he his him some uh, words like that. We we cut them short, but not too, not too much. We must practice to get that pronunciation right. So uh, again, the example: Is he going to work tomorrow? Um, are you going to invite her? So are you going to invite her? Uh, you're not saying invite her. Inviter. Yeah. All right. All right. So that's that's very important to to just do that that glide into the next word. All right. So guys, now we can we can actually get to the uh, I think the most important thing about our discussion today, and that's food. Um, <laughs> I 
I've discovered that uh, that there's a few of you that uh, are as passionate about food as I am. Now, the, this uh, picture that I've put on the screen there, I, I told Kaidi and Mark, it is a traditional South African food uh, called babuati, um, which is a spicy meat and egg combination. I actually think they put some other things in there as well, but it's it's delicious. So, let's have a look at South African recipes and ingredients. We're actually talking about South African cuisine. We won't be looking at, at the recipes as such. All right, so whether you're planning on visiting South Africa or just want to cook up something tasty at home, our iconic recipes and glossary of cooking terms will help demystify this fascinating cuisine. Now, I'm quickly going to give you guys the link to the article because um, I'm sure there might be one or two vocabulary things that you might want to follow up afterwards. All right. Can anybody tell me what demystify means? Maybe uh, deal or... I mystify. Could you please re just repeat that, Ken? I didn't quite hear you. Uh, reveal or you know, not mystify. All right. Not absolutely anymore. Yes. Yeah, so to reveal something, um, you know, it's uh, or to to unmake it a mystery. You know, sometimes. Um, we we look at something or we think about something, and it's quite a mystery and. You know, you don't know what it's all about, but when you get into it, you realize, oh, it's not so complicated, it's not so strange, it's actually quite normal. <laughs> all right, so so we're going to demystify South African cuisine. Um, right, as a host of the 2010 FIFA World Cup, South Africa is getting a lot of attention these days, and its unique cuisine certainly deserves a share. The country's cooking reflects an astonishing mix of influences, a foundation of African ingredients, recipes dating back to Dutch colonial rule, along with a smattering from the British, Portuguese, Germans and other European powers, and spicy touches added by Southeast Asian and Indian laborers. While South Africa still works to overcome the challenges of its trip turbulent history, its diverse people have created a rich and vibrant cooking style that, reflect their, that reflects their cultural melting pot. If you're planning a trip or just want to prepare a South African menu at home, here are the recipes and key terms to know. Right, glossary, anjovit, what Marmite is to the British. So, Pex Angevet is to Peckish South Africans, a savory taste, a savory paste for slathering on a slab of well-buttered toast. As the name suggests, Angevet has a, a, a list of briny ingredients, including, of course, anchovies, that lives up to its eye-catching motto printed on each 4.4 ounce jar, 91% fish. All right, so um, do you guys have anything similar in your countries? Fish. Ninety yeah, percent fish a little similar. Okay. All right, and um, what do you call it? Is it also a fish paste that you put on your toast or, or bread? Yeah, we eat a lot of fish. All right. And fish paste uh, can be eaten in noodle. I believe it can. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so you you will use it almost like a um, what do they call it? Um, when you put a little bit of sauce into your pasta, what do you call that? Uh, <laughs> kind of soup type noodle. Uh, kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah something like that. <laughs> I forget the correct word now, but anyway yes. Exactly that. Now, um, 
the uh, funny thing is I'm I'm talking to you about this and I am South African but I don't eat fish based. <laughs> we we always have fish based in our home because um, my wife loves it and and everybody I know loves it but I don't like it. <laughs> uh, and even the soup stock we took we take, took it from the fish uh, dried fish. Yeah. All right. What 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 exactly is that? The, this you call it super stock. Super stock, yeah, for miso shiro or something. All right. Noodles. Okay, it's so it's it's very similar maybe to um, there's that old English. Uh, is it? Uh, mm, I also forget the name of that, but there's an um, a, a product that comes from England that they originally made from fish and a whole bunch of things fish and vinegar and I don't know everything that they put in a container and it didn't taste very good so the guys left it and I think it was five years later someone opened that container and it had turned into something absolutely delicious um, a Worcester, Worcestershire sauce uh, ah, Worcestershire. Worcestershire sauce. Yeah, they Worcester they spell it Worcestershire, but it's it's Worcester sauce. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, or, or Worcester sauce. There we go. Worcestershire. There we go. Um, that's that's also very similar. Yeah. All right, you guys can see the picture up there. Oh yes. All right, this is also. Uh, very very big in South Africa. We have a brand called Lazenby, um, but it's it's one of the South African favourites, and that's actually not in this article, I think. All right, but then the second one is Bultong. Have you guys ever heard about heard of Bultong? No. You you. All right, Mark. You did you say you have? No, I said that I haven't. You haven't. Kaidi, I think you and I had this discussion before. I told you about Biltong, which is similar to beef jerky. Can you remember that? Or, or am I imagining it? <laughs> Ka Kaidi? Hmm. Seems Kaidi is very quiet today. <laughs> All right, um, w I'm sorry. Oh, but, <laughs> I'm sorry. Ah, okay. <laughs> I was thinking to take some cold drink. <laughs> okay, not a problem. Not a problem. <laughs> All right, so we we're talking about Bultong. This this next one. Do you remember you and I had this discussion before? Um, South African snack similar to beef jerky. Ah, yes, yes. All right. Um, now they say here South Africans. Na South Africa's national snack, similar to beef jerky, uh, although some governments um, liken the best version to prosciutto. What it, I think that's correct pronunciation, prosciutto. But anyway, biltong is an air-cured beef, or sometimes ostrich or springbok, laced with roasted coriander and designed to be gnawed in front of the telly during cricket matches, either sliced or in chewy snap sticks. Now, um, I can tell you that Boltong is definitely the national snack. Uh, it is absolutely delicious. Have you guys seen Boltong before? Maybe no. Not. I will. I will have to show you guys. Uh, There's some nice pictures of Bolton. So, uh, and and in this case, I think it's it's probably beef, especially the picture on the on the left hand side there. Um, yeah, that's uh, fine. yeah, that is uh, that is beef Bolton. Um, dried. Yes, so it's it's dried cured so meat. Have you got any other question, Wufa? 
Is there a, a taste? Uh, sorry, were fire? Yes, you were saying. It's a bit salty. Dry yes. Beef. Yes. I absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's uh, quite salty. They they use salt and uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Coriander and some spices to prepare it. So yeah, but it's it is delicious. And uh, sorry, Mark, you were saying. Yeah, I am. I am. You know, we have something like that in Brazil, but uh, but it's uh, it's just just so, it's uh, just a salty meat, and uh, that's delicious, really. They mix with rice, and that's amazing. All right, so you you mix it with rice. Yeah, that's interesting. That's not something that uh, that I've ever done. I will try that. <laughs> okay. Usually, in, in in South African culture, if you if you're having biltong, you will um, you will be sitting in front of the television watching sports and having a beer or uh, some cold beverage. Wow. Yeah. So um, in in South Africa, they uh, <laughs> they they talk yeah. about. It's, uh, if you yeah. eat it, if you eat a lot of it, do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. If you um, eat a lot of it, they say if you eat a lot of it, you can't have milk after. It. I don't know. I've. You're, they never. say you will get sick if you eat. Um, if you drink milk often. I've tried it before and I get sick. I think. I think maybe. Um, well, fine. I think probably it will have to do with whether you're used to it or not. In in South Africa, it is it is really a, such a part of our culture that we eat, we sometimes eat it literally every day. So you know we are we are used to it. Um, I've had I've had it with milk before, and uh, I can't say that it's made me sick, but I, it's not something that I would do regularly. I you, usually you would have it with. Uh, with something like Coke or, um, you know, a cold drink or or a beer. So, but that's an interesting one. I've I've never thought about it, but I th I'm thinking it could actually, especially if your if your stomach is not used to it, you can you can get sick. Because my parents don't let me eat it if it if I'm going to drink milk after. Yes. Yeah. It's, that makes sense. Yeah. We call it. We call it the star. Can you repeat that? I the don't star. quite. The star. The star. Can Can you put that on the, on the on the, in the text box for us, please? Okay. It's Arabian name. Yeah, I I, th I thought so, but you know, it's um, I I like to it's learn new you know, new South words and, and from North North Africa. It's all nothing right. to have to do with Saudis. People don't eat it at all. Okay. All right, but you say it's um, it's it's, it's similar to to Bolton. All right. Mm, yes, it's beef, and we made it sometime here. Okay. And sometime we uh, just buy it, and it's very expensive here. Does no one do it? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's quite expensive here as well. I think the main reason is, you know, if you go buy the meat, let's say you you buy a kilogram of meat and you make biltong out of that, you might get half a kilogram of of biltong because of all the all the um, moisture that is lost. So it's it's very expensive. But it's it's delicious. All right. So, how, how do I how do I pronounce that? Tishtar. 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 All right. And, and, and it's, it's one kilo cost about um, in dollar uh, forty dollar. Wow, that is very expensive. <laughs> And uh, in, in South Africa, 
Yeah. We crush it and sometimes we cook it. Mix it with the sometime rice. All right. Yes, and you can also um, make it use it to make soup. It makes a delicious soup. Yes, it's uh, very healthy for all people. Yeah, because it's it's very nourishing. Absolutely. All right. All right. So uh, I'm I'm busy collecting some uh, some new words here. Um, Mark, do I how do I pronounce that? Is it chark? Uh, actually, Sharky. Sharky. Yeah. All right. Kind of. Actually, I put up a picture so that you can see <coughs> later. All right. I'd really appreciate that. So okay. it's in, in Brazil, it is uh, called Sharky. And yeah. in Saudi Arabia, it's called Chitar. Is that correct? No, Saudi Arabia don't know about it. Uh, uh, sorry, you're not. Um, where were you from again, Wafa? I'm from Saudi Arabia, but I'm not native Saudi. Okay. So it's from north. It's from north from Africa. North Africa, all right. Mauritania. All right, great stuff. I'm. I'm also, you know, like I said, I'm. I'm making notes as far as I go, um, because I. I like learning. New words, and 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 some some new uh, cultural things. All right, so uh, I've made a note of that. Okay, let's get back to our article. Um, and sorry, guys, I'm trying to get to the right screen. There we go. All right, so we've we've spoken about biltong now, and then one of the South African favourites is buurwurst. German settlers created this farmer's sausage in the 1800s, served up with a goodly dollop of pop and sauce. Um, that's African corn polenta, accompanied by a herby tomato sauce. Budavos are now ubiquitous at backyard bries. When dried, these plump, coiled tubes of minced beef and pork, spiked with coriander and cloves, become druvors, a kind of Kalahari Slim Jim, and the cylindrical cousin of Biltong. All right, so they also take this sausage, and we, we take it and we, we dry it. We also air cure it, and we then we call it druvors. And that is almost almost better than, uh, than Biltong. So I just want to check you guys still all there. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. All right. Okay. Now just just checking. <laughs> all right. Then uh, the next one is Bry. Inspired, um, inspiring no end of rapture uh, amongst uh, all parts of South Africa's population. The cherished Bry, which rhymes with I. Yeah, you can. That's a good way to remember it. Bry, B R I, Bry, is essentially an open air, open flame barbecue. Anything and everything is liable to be charred, from boerewort to lamb chops to lobster to the ever popular snook. See below. We'll still get to that. According to South African culinary expert Lanis Snayman. Wineland briars feed their flames with vine stumps. Up in the free state, briar heads prefer to stoke up with corn cobs. It's not untrue, but maybe not that true. Um, I live in the free state, um, and so, you know, so, yeah, some people uh, use corn cobs to uh, to start the fire, but we actually use usually. This, no, nah, let me get a, a picture of that. Um, yeah, there's a there's a good picture of a bry. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so we use charcoal, c compressed um, charcoal, and it it works a charm. That's a typical South African bry. The guys are just hanging out, having some beers and and roasting some meat. A polenta, right? 
um, con polenta. Polenta is the Italian word. And and polenta, what? Is, polenta what is, is uh, Italian cuisine. Con yeah. powder. Con powder. All right. Yes. Okay. Yes. We we call it pop or porridge. Um, mm. oh, but yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's yeah, it's it's ground um, corn that they. Uh, well, we just basically cook it up, and yeah, then you you add the, uh, in the pan. Pan is already boiling a uh, soup. Then they put um, polenta, the powder, powdery corn. Then mixed. Yes. That's porridge. Yes, and you and you can either make a a very uh, watery porridge, or you can make it um, that it's almost like crumbs. Uh, like like lumpy pieces, and and that's probably a South African favorite to make it lumpy. Um, we call it crumble pop. It's delicious. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's look at the next one, bunny chow. This beloved takeaway dish originated a century ago in the curry houses of Durban, a South African city that has the largest Indian population outside of the mother country. A quarter of or half loaf of bread is hollowed out to make a yeasty, chewy bowl, which is then filled with spicy chicken, lamb, or bean curry. This portable and delicious concoction was invented as a way of bypassing South Africa's race laws, which prohibited African patrons from eating in s inside Indian and Malay establishments. All right, so it's it's interesting how the political history has influenced our our cooking. Bunny chow is one of the best things you'll ever eat. <laughs> it's it's really good. All right, so the next one, Mrs. Ball's chutney. Not to be confused with a tangier major graze, Mrs. Ball's chutney is South Africa's answer to ketchup, an addictively sweet and zesty concoction engineered for dousing hamburgers or as a uh, down-home Anglo-style sambal for curries. All right. Do you guys know chutney? I don't, but it must be delicious. I was looking at it, some picture. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's really good. It's what they what they basically use to cook it up is um, you use different kinds of fruit and obviously sugar and spices. So wow. it is it is delicious. It's really really good. Um, if you guys ever visit South Africa, um, you have to try Mrs. Ball's chutney. All right, and then the next one is also a South African favorite. Um, peri peri. When Portuguese sailors made port of call in what's now South Africa and Mozambique, they brought ashore little chili peppers called bird's eyes, um, or peri peri in Swahili. The name also came to refer to the piquant sauce made from these chilies, as well as the Portuguese African method of cooking prawns, chicken, or anything else in the sauce. Nando's bottled version is a mainstay for those who don't want to make it from scratch. And we can I can honestly tell you guys Nando's they it's a, Nando's is a, a takeaway restaurant that make chicken, but they also sell their peri peri sauce and it is superb. Very good. Alright, so the last one here. Snook. So the Africans rabid devotion to Thersites Atom, better known as Snook, ensures that this bony, barracuda-like, oily-fleshed fish, reputed to be quite fierce at sea, turns up in a variety of tasty guises. Smoked, bried with apricot glaze, mashed into pâté, or braised in a rice dish called smurfas. The curious Afrikaans expression, slot may do it with a pop snook, used to indicate surprise or dismay, and it translate as, hit me dead with a soft snook. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> the, it, it has, that expression has actually evolved um, 
and and nowadays I'm going to turn the camera back on. Nowadays we will say slot my meta not fuss. So uh, that is, you know, when when someone tells you something that you don't believe, you you'll say slot my meta not fuss, and that means hit me with a with a wet fish. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Quite a curious expression. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, you know, this all all of this made me made me curious, and I'm thinking, do you guys have in your culture um, curious a, a curious expression like that? Um, that? Maybe I can I can start with Kaidi. Have you got in in in, in your your native tongue um, an expression similar, or maybe not similar, but Something that wouldn't make sense if you translate it. Yeah, uh, there are many words uh, I can't translate to English. Okay. Or oh, if if you've got one that you can translate to English, that even if it doesn't make sense, you know, and you can explain to us what what the context is. Have you got something like that? Hmm. But because uh, Japanese cuisine is quite quite sensitive, so there are many expressions to yeah. refer the uh, taste. Okay. All right. And uh, but I understand sometimes you know some things you just cannot translate. <laughs> All right. Yeah. But you know even moving away from from food, you know I know we are talking about food, but I'm actually curious about funny expressions. You know, this expression, uh, if I translate it, I'll, I'll also type that in the in the text box. Um, it hit me with a wet fish. Um, it, it actually just means that I'm surprised. Um, so it doesn't have to necessarily have anything to do with cuisine. Um, can uh, can anybody tell me maybe in your cultures if you've got a, a quirky expression, a weird expression that wouldn't make sense to a foreigner? Uh, it is said uh, tea leaf, uh, you know, is floating vertically. Uh, it yeah. brings good luck. <laughs> All right. You know, but, yeah, and, and uh, I mean that's something that. Wouldn't really make sense to us in in, uh, in South Africa, yeah. All right. So so a, flo a tea leaf that is floating partially. Yeah, partially, partially. It's a layer actually, you know. Is okay. Because it, does it usually float completely? Yeah, kind of, kind not vertically. So if that happens, oh, vertically yeah, I heard, like that. Yeah, I heard a, ch a tea maker in the past uh, did this yeah. campaign uh, in a very long time ago. Or yeah. you know, promoting uh, their tea sales. That's All right. what, yeah, <laughs> the saying uh, came from. Okay, that's quite interesting. That's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any of you other guys, Mark? Maybe have you got a in in, in your native tongue a curious expression? Well, <clears throat> actually, we have many proverbs. Uh, that have the same meaning in English, but I don't think it's that funny as yours, you know. But, <laughs> but, but we have many, for example, let me see one, let me write down one. All right. Okay. So, but but you, you can't think of a specific one right now. Okay, I'll try to put... Uh, Hold on. If you can go to another student, then you can back to me, and I'm looking for uh, a fine one. All right. Okay. I'm okay. also quickly looking for a, a, a video that I actually want to quickly show you guys. It's just a video clip of a few seconds. But um, maybe, Wafa, have you got anything in your native tongue, in your native language, um, an expression that is that is 
funny or strange? Uh, it's me that I posted in the chat. Um, okay, let's go. Name in English has the same uh, same uh, name. It's, uh, it's named Kiss Kiss. Oh, this is the delicious. Yes, I've uh, I've clicked on that. It's oh, this is really really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's famous all around the world. Uh, sorry, say that again. It's famous dish. A absolutely, yes. Even even in South Africa, um, couscous is is something that we are oh, we absolutely love. Um, and uh, it it never used to be in available in South Africa. I think only for about the last ten years. That people start cooking with it, and um, in 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 our house we eat it every week. I love it; it's it's really good, and especially if you use couscous with a, a spicy or curry uh, type of meat. So uh, yeah. yeah, very cool, awesome. I right, think, guys, I'm I'm really trying hard to uh, to find a a specific video. That I quickly want to show you guys. Um, uh, so if I can, as, as soon as I can get a hold of it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys. But um, in the meantime, uh, Mark, have you uh, found anything for us, for us yet? <laughs> Unfortunately, not yet. I'm sorry <laughs> because we have many proverbs, but uh, they are they they have an English translation. You know, Americans or even uh, British use the same, but uh, in our language, uh, it's kind of different because some ex some uh, some words and expressions you can translate literally, but <laughs> but but I didn't didn't find any. Anyone that was really funny, you know, like your. Right. <laughs> yeah, I must say this one is especially funny. And uh, what I was looking for, you know, if if you guys want to go look on the uh, internet to see if you can find it, um, a local filmmaker and funny man. His name is Leon Schuster, and in one of his movies, he actually took this expression, um, "hit me with a wet fish," and he went and put himself on on uh, um, you know on on the edge of a what do you call it just just next to the to to the sea and he had someone take this big fish and this guy hit him with a fish so uh you see that video is is actually very funny um cuz then you see the you know that's what's the what the expression actually looks like but uh and and you see the surprise on his face, so it's 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 quite cool. Um, but anyways, and I, I see Kaidi also uh, put something here to pull out an eye from a living horse. I'm very curious. What would that? What does that mean? If 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 you could translate it. Yeah, your expression is a little scary. So I looked for some scary uh, expression. <laughs> <laughs> that is scary. <laughs> The person so, is very smart uh, in a business team like that. Mm. Okay, so it's it's someone who's who's um, okay, yeah, like you said, very smart in in a business sense. They can yes. they can almost steal from you without you realizing it. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. All right, I love that expression. I'm going to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely remembering that. All right, but uh, anyway, guys, that uh, concludes our talk about South African cuisine and and funny expressions. Um, any any thoughts from any of you? Any last thoughts or something you'd like to share or ask? So, in general, uh, is South African foods, uh, you know, spicy or not spicy or salty or <laughs> not That's salty? Difficult one to answer. It's okay. um, uh, you maybe, know, 
in, in different parts of South Africa, right. especially if you, if you go towards closer towards Durban or Natal, um, I would say the food there is, is definitely spicy. Um, if you go to where I live, Free State um, and the Northern Cape, I'm going to put that up there, um, it's, it would rather be more salty and uh, the kind of spices that you would typically find would be um, like coriander and uh, basil, that kind of thing. That's um, more the, the and and it's also it's it's the Bry capital, <laughs> and uh, in the Free State and Northern Cape, we we love to to Bry. It's it's mm -hmm. some of our our best uh, well, our favorite ways of eating. Um, if you go towards Cape Town, um, I think they are more oriented towards fish dishes. You can, you can of course, find other cuisine there as well, but this is just my personal experience. Um, yeah, so it's it depends on where you're going. Mm -hmm. It really right. depends. You, you can't really say it's this or it's that because there's uh -huh. too many influences. Mm -hmm. Right. Kind of diver, uh, you know, South African cuisine has diversity. A lot. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a lot of diversity. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, you know what? I have to tell you that I saved that link as a favorite and I will probably try one of your recipes. And I think it will be yellow rice. I think it must be amazing. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> yellow rice is good, especially if you if you ta um, take it the traditional way, yellow rice with uh, um, raisins in it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. It's South Africa is a very northern yeah. part of Africa, so many sheep from the world uh, dropped by that place, right? Yeah, yeah. And you know, if you look at South Africa's history. Um, the first trade route between, um, if I can say, Western Europe and, and the Americas, um, when they started trading with, um, with the East, with India and all of those, uh, Cape Town became the halfway point. Um, so that's where South Africa gets all its influences. There were people from, uh, from the New World and from Europe coming here. There were people coming from... Um, India and Malaysia and um, and that side, so it's literally it's it's the halfway point, and our cuisine reflects it. Mm, yeah. But but if I can if I can make one um, suggestion about cuisine that you can that you can really try that is delicious, if you can find a recipe for that, Portuguese chicken. And I see uh, Mr. Furkan is, is asking if I'm going to sing today. <laughs> uh, good day, Mr. Furkan. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so um, anyway, guys, uh, I believe that, uh, that that is a wrap. Um, we have run out of time, and um, I'm, I'm afraid we're going to have to say goodbye. If I can, can answer Furkan's question... Uh, Furkan, I will make a, a video of, of me singing and I will put it on YouTube. Will that be acceptable? <laughs> so, uh, anyways, guys, uh, thank you for, for joining our class today. It was really a pleasure having you all here. And, thank you um, very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. You are more than welcome. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Right. See you. Take, take care. Bye-bye.